almost all the matches, all the international matches for France in the last 10 years. It's a foul. It's a foul. It's a penalty. I think they got their penalty at last because that penalty in the first half against Kane, that was a penalty, possible penalty, because some photos showed that Kane was actually fouled just outside the box. So maybe it was not a penalty, it was a foul. But England neither got a penalty nor got a foul. But this time is clean as a whistle. Saka was fouled by our own, by our own Madridista Aurelian Chouamini. So it's time for Harry Kane, where he is absolute best. Like he is one of the best penalty takers in the whole world, not only in the Premier League. Penalty scoring records are impeccable. So I'll not be surprised. Scores the first goal for England in this match. Let's see what happens. Is Harry Kane versus the French captain. Hugo Lloris is sparse versus sparse. I'm quite sure these guys know each other very well. Harry Kane knows Hugo Lloris. Hugo Lloris knows Harry Kane. So that makes it more interesting. Let's see what happens. But I feel Harry Kane will score this one because he is one of those poachers. He will score 9.9 .9 penalties out of 10 every time you give him a chance. So I think it's a goal for England. Let's see if Hugo Lloris has something different to say. Little more drama from there. English captain against the French captain. Oh, it's a goal. It's a thundering penalty. It's a wow. That's a penalty England wanted to see. The English fans wanted to see. So Aurelien Chouamini scored a goal in the first half and just returned back the favor to England in the second half. <laughs> That's, I think, the circle of life, right? You score one, you concede one. So it's 1 1 between England and France. I'll not be surprised if this match goes on to the extra time even to penalties. And if you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, and thumbs up our videos and share with your friends. Goal! It's a goal! Oh my goodness, he missed that! Oh my goodness, he missed that! That was a great save from Pickford! Can you believe that? That was a great save! Look at that save from Pickford! Wow, but once again, it was a great chance for Giroud to make it. Ah, it was straight to Pickford. <laughs> Pickford had no other way except saving that. He just straight fell into his lap. No other option. It's a goal. It's a goal. It's a goal for Shiru. Shiru has scored. Shiru has scored. Shiru has scored. It's Olivier Shiru, highest scorer in the history of France. The highest goal scorer in French football history has just struck gold. Absolute goal. I think it's done and dusted now because 10 more minutes to go and is Olivier Giroud striking for France and taking France to the same final to play against Morocco. This is some turn of events because all of a sudden this is what happens when you have such lethal strikers like Giroud, Mbappé and Dembélé in your team. Because if you are seeing the match, you would see that last 10, 12, 15 minutes it was all about England. They are pressing more, they are creating more chances. But when you have such dangerous strikers like Giroud, Mbappé, Dembélé, Griezmann, they can change the match in a matter of second. Look at that bond between Giroud and Mbappé because before the World Cup started, we all thought maybe they will not get along. And before it happened, in fact, last World Cup or last Euro, Mbappé was uh, complaining about Giroud and how he plays. It doesn't match with his playing style. But in this World Cup, they look in sync. They are united. And when France is united, it's a bad news for all the team because France and French players, they are really united. And when they're united, you can understand the outcome. And that's what we are seeing right now. It's 2-1 for France against England in this quarter-final. Once again, Giroud, 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 just when it matters, he rises up to the occasion and does it for France. Every time France needs him, and that's the reason he has so many goals. They're asking for a penalty. They're asking for a penalty. It doesn't look like a penalty. It's too soft. It's too soft. Mason Mount, one of those culprits who dive. But that was so unnecessary from Theo. It looks like a shoulder to shoulder. But since it's England, they will check it like 5,000 times. They're checking for a possible penalty. But once again, as I said, guys, he's checking. Once again, I'm saying, I think it's too soft. Mason Mount just went down too easily. And that was unnecessary from Theo Hernandez, if you ask me. The ex Madrid man, the present AC Milan man, that was unnecessary. I think he will give it as a penalty. But I would say this is not a penalty because it's too soft. He went down too easily. Okay, so it's a penalty. Second penalty for England. Only for England, these kinds of advantages are available because if it was some other team, except Argentina, they would not even regard 
this as a penalty. And once again, Carry Kane is up to the task. His task is simple. He has to keep England in the match by scoring this goal. But I think it's a goal. It's a goal for Harry Kane. Harry Kane, this guy is like one of those pushers. He will score 100 out of 100 times. Oh, wow, what was that? What was that? What was that? What was that? What is that from Harry Kane? Wow! That was horrible, horrible. I think he just shot the World Cup semi-final back to London. Wow, back to England. What was that from Harry Kane? Unbelievable. And look at that kid. He's crying. Makes sense. Because that was not a kick. That was not even a free kick. That looked like a damn goal kick. How can you be so far from the post when you're taking a penalty? He's like this best marksman from England, from Spurs, and he has missed a penalty. Can you believe that? But I feel it's justice because that was not a penalty to begin with. So it makes more sense that he missed that. Theo Hernandez, my man, what are you doing? Why are you fouling players like that? 